Welcome to this presentation on the treatment of digestive disorders. I divided the presentation into five parts. First, theory and principles of the digestive system. Then other systems that need to be addressed when we treat digestive disorders. Then palpatory reflexes that are common in digestive issues. Then common points used in the treatments. And then protocols used for different conditions. You can, of course, just jump to any particular section you might find interesting. However, this division is quite artificial, especially amongst the latter four sections. Also, I want to emphasize that protocols are a very useful tool in clinical practice, but for me, they are merely a starting point. It is important to look at the whole picture and modify protocols according to the patient's history and other findings. When a patient comes in with, say, acid reflux, this might be the main component of the medical history and might respond to the protocols for acid reflux. Or this condition might be secondary to some other issues, and the acid reflux will only get better when those other so-called underlying conditions are treated. Conversely, a patient who comes in for a non-digestive complaint, say shoulder pain, but with a past history of a digestive issue, even if it is no longer bothering them, will often not improve until the past digestive issue is being addressed. This is where protocols come in handy. They give us points that we can experiment with, whether for the condition they are prescribed for or for a person who once had that condition. <coughs> As this is a PowerPoint presentation, it does not contain demonstrations or actual treatments where one can see modifying and playing with protocols. And I feel it is important to be clear that yes, sometimes a protocol works like a charm, with nothing added, nothing modified, but more commonly, one has to work out the protocol. One starts with it as a starting point and modifies, even to the point where it is no longer recognizable. I try to make this presentation as practical as possible, but without actual patients, it always remains somewhat in the theoretical domain. Digestive complaints are common, and many other conditions have roots in digestion. In fact, we often talk of the importance of nutrition as a primary cure. Digestion has always been a central concern in Chinese medicine. To be alive means to digest, that is to interact with the world, to take the world in, make it yours, and transform what you received, letting go of what is not needed. Any organism, if it is alive, it is constantly digesting or interacting with the environment, digesting it. Although there are breatharians, people who do not eat and live on air alone, not only are they an incredible minority, they are still digesting and exchanging air. Chinese medicine, being a philosophically based medicine, is very much interested in how the human organism interacts with the world, assimilates the world, is affected by the world. It is because of this interest that we have developed models of progression of pathogenic qi through the six and four layers, for example. Acupuncture, which aims at restoring harmony, has to be concerned with digestion as a central theme. Harmony, huh, is in fact having food in the mouth. I think we all recognize that it is hard to feel harmonious when we have no food. And we also know that when we have food, but our digestive system is not working well, harmony is also quite hard to attain. A simple organism, like an amoeba, is able to absorb nutrients through cell walls, performing transformation within itself and excrete waste out through the cell walls back to the environment around it. As organisms grow in complexity and size, many cells now form the organism and they are not able to all directly absorb nutrients from the environment. The organism now starts to develop different cells and different organs specializing in different functions. 
the absorption, transformation, and excretion is now occupying a central canal in the organism with an entry point at one end and an excretion point at the other, while the middle transports and absorbs the substances. And now we have a digestive system. Evolution has dictated a digestive tract. But the organism now is not small enough for food that comes through the central canal, the digestive tract, to be directly absorbed by all of the cells. The cells that are bordering on the digestive tract can absorb the food, but what about those further away? What about the limbs, which will eventually allow us to reach out for more interactions, more food, and the capacity to manipulate our environment? And so, the evolutionary process resulted in a circulatory system, blood vessels and a heart, to circulate the nutrients. Digestion is in the center of life, just as the digestive tract is. And from a practical perspective, this means it relates to the ren and the chong. Also, they are, those are the central channels. This brings us to the interesting dynamic of the spleen and the heart. Because when we look at it this way, the heart becomes somewhat of a servant of digestive transformation and a bit less of the emperor. Practically speaking, we see the use of the spleen points in circulatory issues. For example, spleen six and spleen nine for use in blood pressure issues. And the frequent combination of spleen and pericardium points in the, in the use uh, of treatment of anxiety, depression, insomnia, etc., as well as for digestive disorders. When we look at digestive pathologies, they will involve blockages, lack of movement, and inflammatory conditions. Aside from the physical, they have clear mental, emotional, and even spiritual language associated. We describe much of our emotional la landscape in the language of digestion. A hungry ghost, for example, a gui, describes a person whose needs are enormous, but can never be satiated. Therefore, they are lost, and they never feel loved, needed, or wanted. Hungry ghosts are depicted as having long and very narrow throats, so the food cannot pass through, and therefore they are always hungry. This is a description of obstruction or lack of movement on the physical digestion, but is actually referring to a spiritual state. Obviously, we don't have people with very long throats and very um, and narrow throats. We're really not talking about the physical component here. The over decay of food, creating inflammation, is gu jiang. Gu decay also means poison, as well as to be enchanted or to be witched. The character is a worm on a dish or a plate. This is again using physical poison, decay or parasitical state of the digestion system as a metaphor to being mentally or spiritually intoxicated and taken over by something that is not you, that is boring into you, taking control over you, rotting you. The stomach channel describes the understanding of digestion very clearly in the first branch. It starts at the eye, then goes down to the nose, circles the mouth, goes through the jaw, the chewing muscles, up the side of the ear. This is collecting input from all the sensory options, eyes, nose, mouth, ear. It then goes through two passages, the lower guan, stomach seven, and the upper guan, gallbladder three, of the zygomatic arch and then it enters the brain at Du 24, Shen Ting, the courtyard of the Shen. This tells us that the primary goal of digestion is to collect input and to bring it to the brain. From stomach five, Da Ying, the great welcome, starts the second branch that goes down through stomach nine, Yen Ying, the human welcome, and down to the chest and the abdomen. But the first branch is that which goes into the brain. The ancient Chinese already described the gut as the second brain, even though they never use concepts like serotonin. 
From a practical angle, this suggests the importance of the line of do 24 out to stomach 8 in treating digestive issues, and in practice, this proves to be correct. Of course, we can also have a fairly large discussion in the text on Yang Ming disorders and their effect on the Shen. Today, we might not see too many patients running naked at the top of the roof, but we still use stomach points as well as digestive treatments to treat the Shen. The Shen is simply too easily disturbed by digestion. The two are highly correlated. Digestive issues center around movement, breakdown, absorption, and then circulation and elimination. When the movement is hampered and is too slow, or breakdown is too slow, decay will take place, and now the tissue of the digestive tract will get inflamed, and then absorption will also be affected. The tissue of the digestive tract is composed of smooth muscles that allows for movement, and of mucosal membrane that are susceptible to becoming inflamed. The concentration of mucosal membrane and lymph tissue allows for the absorption and still offering protection to the organism. These two aspects of movement and absorption, smooth muscles and mucosal immune tissue, represents the two aspects of digestion. They represent the Fu and the Zhang aspects. Then the food is absorbed into the lymph and blood and further processed by the liver. That is where the idea of the liver ensuring distribution of smooth flow qi might have arrived. Within the digestive tract proper, most disorders will center around movement, either too slow, reversed, etc. Or there may be inflammation, decay byproducts, creating tissue harm. This brings us to the subject of contributing factors and systems in digestion. And the first two, which correspond to the movement and absorption, are the nervous system and the immune system. It is quite obvious that the nervous system has a strong effect on digestion. The movement within the digestive tract is created by the smooth muscles as well as by sphincters. Both are influenced by nerve signals. The motility of smooth muscles is coordinated by pacemaker-like cells. The sphincters are dependent on signals from the vagus nerve. Hence, in all digestive problems, it is important to check the SCM muscles as a reflection of the vagus nerve, as well as T4, T5, the spinal origin of the innervation of the stomach. Release the SCM with opposite side Sun Jiao 8, located about one third below the elbow. Slide your finger lightly up the Sun Jiao channel and it will stop at Sun Jiao 8. Needle at a slight angle towards the small intestine channel. Make sure to find the right point that releases the SCM, as well as any findings on the cervicals. For patients with a rapid pulse, Sanjiao 5 might work better than Sanjiao 8. Check pericardium 8 for pressure pain. Use pericardium 3 and pericardium 5, the metal water points, if there is discomfort on pericardium 8, the fire point. If there is no discomfort on pericardium 8, use either pericardium 4, located two tsun or three fingers below pericardium 3, or use pericardium 6. Choose the point that releases the most findings in the abdomen and the neck. I take pericardium 3 between the two tendons, not medial to the tendons as described by current texts. Patients with blood pressure issues, both high and low, or have occipital tightness, will often benefit from the point under the third toe, in the middle of the crease where the third toe meets the ball of the foot. A tight pulse is an indication for this point. It also works better for rapid pulse types. A tight pulse is a pulse that feels sharp or tight and which either disappears or softens upon deeper pressure. TCM practitioners 
might describe it as a thin wiry pulse. However, officially, a wiry pulse is classified as an excess pulse. So a pulse that has a tightness to it, but is thin, does not qualify as a wiry pulse. A key feature of the tight pulse is that it either disappears upon deeper pressure or it changes quality and becomes rounder, softer upon pressure. On the back, patients with autono autonomic nervous system disorders will show pressure pain around T7 to T2 and on the left side bladder 43 area, which reflects the heart and the pacemaker. Use do too, needled upwards to release these areas and also use the point between small intestine 9 and small intestine 10, taken slightly more medially than either, that is away from the arm. Look for a spring-like feeling or a bounce when you press on the point. Small intestine 9, 10 should be needled towards the deltoid and release pressure pain in the upper thoracics. Look at the line of do 24 to stomach 8 in patients with digestive disorders and an autonomic nervous system disorder. The right point or points can be anywhere along this line and should release the neck and other findings. I avoid using these points until all body points have been needled, but you should check them for effectiveness as part of the process of determining which points to use. The reason for delaying using the skull points is that when we use these, the brains can then signal a sort of satiation and many of the reflexes on the body will no longer show because the brain is now no longer perceiving the pressure on the connective tissue reflexes as uncomfortable. It is a bit like putting the brain in a euphoric state. This means that you now do not have a good method to assess your other, your body points that can directly affect the connective tissues and the channels. So use these points of the area of do 24 to stomach 8 last. A tight diaphragm affects digestion in a number of ways. The nervous system and the state of the diaphragm are highly correlated. Releasing the diaphragm allows more parasympathetic input and smooths out the nervous system. The movement of the diaphragm affects the motility of the digestive system throughout. And it also acts to increase abdominal pressure to facilitate bowel movements. A tight diaphragm can show as tightness around REN15 and more laterally along the edges of the ribs as well as around T7 and laterally at gas shoe, the diaphragm shoe area. On the neck, there may be tightness at C3, C4 level, where the phrenic nerve comes out. A tight diaphragm will often present with pressure pain along the REN channel from REN12 to REN15. Release the diaphragm with bladder 2. Also use spleen 3 and pericardium meaning check pericardium 8 and choose accordingly. If pericardium 8 is painful, use pericardium 3 and pericardium 5, the metal water combination. If pericardium 8 is not painful, use either pericardium 4, tutson below P3, or pericardium 6, whichever releases the neck and abdomen best. With cervical tightness, use Sanjiao 8, one third below the elbow to release the phrenic nerve at C3, C5. Use Sanja 8 on the same side as the cervical that you are trying to release. There are other strategies that can release the diaphragm, but bladder 2 and the spleen pericardium combination and Sanja 8 should be your starting point. Briefly, lung 4 above 3 tsun above lung 5 facilitates the movement of the intercostals and of the diaphragm. Gallbladder 29 in front of the trochanter increases the space between the thighs and the torso and therefore takes out any downward fall of the chest and opens the diaphragm. 
gallbladder 34 can also release a tight diaphragm, though usually as a supporting point to these other ones, rarely as a standalone. Also, liver 4, which releases the psoas, stomach 30 area, which then in turn affects the diaphragm. The next big system that contributes to digestive disorders is the immune system. This is not surprising, as the digestive system serves as a mediator between the organism and the environment which it digests, and therefore contains mucosal membranes that are susceptible to inflammation, and it is surrounded by lymph in order to protect the organism. Immune responses include both infections and inflammation. Immune problems can reflect on the neck glands behind the SCM at Samjav 16 area, as well as on right stomach 26, 27 area above the appendix, a lymph rich area. It can also reflect on the tissue directly under the scapular spine and just above the posterior iliac crest. Not all of these have to be positive to conclude an immune issue. The release of these reflex area and other abdominal findings with the so-called immune points is the confirmation of the diagnosis of immune. The immune points are on the edge of the bone between large intestine 10 and 11, so they are not on the large intestine channel, but a bit closer to the sun jiao. They are needled towards the bone or towards the sun jiao or small intestine channels. Stomach 41, taken more laterally, as close to the extensor digitorum, but medial to it and needle towards gallbladder 40, is an anti-inflammatory point and is called for when there is pressure pain on right stomach 26, 27, and in issues like yeast or small intestine bacterial overgrowth, things like that. Spleen 5 is another anti-inflammatory point and affects the digestive tract. Any metal water point combination on the same channel can be used as an anti-inflammatory treatment for that channel, especially if the fire point of that channel on that side is painful upon pressure. The adrenal treatment, as in kidney 6 and 27, can also be used as an anti-inflammatory treatment. Quite typically, it will be kidney 7 with kidney 27 rather than kidney 6 and kidney 27. But one has to check which combination is more effective in clearing the various abdominal and neck findings. This is using the principle of using the water channel to overcome fire and the use of cortisol, adrenal, to overcome inflammation. Lung 5, the water point of the lungs, the kidney's mother meridian, can be added to strengthen the anti-inflammatory effect. Small intestine 11's effect on digestion is also partly anti-inflammatory in nature. It is a point on the young fire channel, hence it is supposed to address fire or inflammation. Here is the immune point. Notice it is an area and is always on the edge of the bone. It tends to be closer to large intestine 11 than large intestine 10, and it is needled at an angle down towards the small intestine channel. And here is the anti-inflammatory stomach 41, which is more lateral than the regular stomach 41. The regular stomach 41 I use a lot for structural issues, and this one, the anti-inflammatory one, the one more lateral, is needled also laterally towards gallbladder 40, while the regular stomach 41 is needled at an angle towards kidney 6. The liver plays a major role in digestive complaints. Liver problems can cause abdominal pain, loss of appetite, nausea, etc. The liver is the final destination of digestion before it is circulated to the rest of the body. Weak liver function results in a lesser ability to detoxify and break down digested molecules. The liver tends to show on the right side, under the ribs, and at times it can also show on liver 14 proper, on the ribs, but it is more typical to find pressure pain or discomfort under the ribs. 
when digestion is affected by the liver and the splenic flexure is backed up as a result, there can be pressure pain or discomfort around left stomach 22-23. This reflects the splenic flexure, but it can be a result of a fatty or sluggish liver. So when you find left stomach 22-23, the splenic flexure, do also check the right side to see if the liver is involved. Left stomach 26-27 reflects the portal vein as it moves towards the liver. And if it shows, one should also check the liver on the right side. On the back, the liver reflects as pressure pain on right side level of T7 to T9. A fatty liver is a common finding in patients with digestive disorders since it is common in overweight patients as well as with high alcohol consumers. A fatty liver will show either as dull pain on the right side under the ribs or when you pinch the skin there, you will be picking up more tissue than you were picking on the left side. And the patient might even say, oh, it feels weird on the right side. Note that this finding is the same as for liver deficiency so your distinction is going to be based on Western diagnosis and not on palpatory findings between liver deficiency and fatty liver. On the back, fatty liver tends to show on right bladder 43, Gao Wang Shu, which is related to fat. Again, this is the finding that can be found in other liver issues. The treatment of fatty liver is right liver 8, right stomach 25, and right liver 13. On the back, use left bladder 35, right bladder 43, and right small intestine 11. For the obese patient, start the treatment with left gallbladder 26, then left stomach 26, 27, then REN6, and only then do right stomach 25 and right liver 13. This is because in an obese patient, the fat is slowing down or muffling the effect of the needle. And so the needle has to be shuttled or amplified. Therefore, you start further away on the left, pushing towards the liver on the right, as if creating a bigger, stronger wave that will have enough momentum to go through the fat. Liver deficiency, shows as dull pain under the ribs on the right side or as thickness when you pinch. This is similar to fatty liver, but without the official diagnosis, no cholesterol level issues, etc. In these cases of liver deficiency, use liver one on the right side. Search around the base of the nail of the big toe, from the middle of the toe and laterally to the edge, and from the base of the nail all the way to the joint crease, on the back, still use left bladder 35. Liver excess will show as sharp pain under the right ribs and even possibly on liver 14. The person may have a history of hepatitis, alcoholism, or had undergone chemotherapy or radiation. The treatment for liver excess is right side kidney 7, right side spleen 7, right heart 3, and right pericardium 4, two tsun or three fingers below pericardium 3. On the back, use left bladder 35 and right T7 to T9. There are more liver treatment options. It is not always possible to distinguish between liver excess and liver def deficiency, and it is actually common for both to be present simultaneously. This is a subject con that can get quite long and exhaustive. I will only mention here that kidney 9 has a strong affinity to the liver and works for both deficiency and excess. Circulatory issues affect digestion also. Blood circulation is a requirement for digestion. First, because it is the end product of the digestive tract, where things will be absorbed into and then distributed. And also mechanically, because absorption through the intestinal wall requires pressure, 
so that molecules can pass through the wall into the bloodstream. Blood pressure can be a central piece in treating digestive disorders, not just high blood pressure, but low blood pressure as well, as it means sluggish exchange. Some people have blood pressure readings that are ne neither low nor high, and yet they suggest a problem. This happens when the difference between the systolic and the diastolic pressures has a gap that is too narrow, less than 30, or too high, over 60, between the two. An example would be someone with a blood pressure of 105 over 80. They are not officially classified as low blood pressure, and yet the gap is too narrow between 105 and 80. Similarly, a reading of 125 over 60 is clearly not one of high blood pressure nor a flow, and yet the diastolic and the systolic pressures are too far apart. Many people, including medical practitioners, are not used to the idea that low blood pressure can be a cause of problems, especially if the patient is not experiencing dizziness when standing up. Abnormal gaps are usually ignored totally. However, in my experience, both low blood pressure and narrow or wide gaps are contributing factors to many disorders and are often the main solution to the patient's health concerns. The treatment of blood pressure disorders, whether low, high, or weird gap, is spleen 6, spleen 9, and pericardium, meaning check pericardium 8, and if it has pain upon pressure, use pericardium 3 and 5, the metal water points. If pericardium 8 is discomfort free, use either pericardium 4, three fingers below pericardium 3, or use pericardium 6. Use the point under the third toe at the underside of the foot in the middle of the crease where the third toe meets the ball of the foot. On the back, use small intestine 9, 10, that is between small intestine 9 and small intestine 10, and slightly more medial, more towards the shoulder blade than both. There are no clear reflexes that indicate a blood pressure pathology, though in some cases there will be discomfort or even gumminess under the occiput. Confirm your points by using any reflexes you find on the body. This is a treatment I use quite a lot to address digestive issues in patients with so-called interesting blood pressure, and often there is little else that needs to be added. To stop bleeding, use Spleen 7. Just take it behind the bone, just behind the bone. Many people take Spleen Channel for the back, but for Spleen 7 to be effective, it needs to basically hug the bone. Look for a dent, a hole, or a gummy, puffy, or soft feeling. There can actually be both a dent and a nodule, or a dent and a gummy feeling here. Spleen 7 works best when adding ocu, direct moxa. When bleeding has been long-term and there's a need to build up blood, use Spleen 6 and Pericardium 4 or Pericardium 6. I tend to prefer Pericardium 4 in these cases, but Pericardium 6 might prove to be more effective. Evaluate which point to use by checking their effectiveness in clearing the abdomen and the neck. Be aware that the effective point might be different on each side. We also have to consider hormonal components, as estrogen slows down motility and boosts production of serotonin, and low estrogen increases sensitivity to pain and promotes inflammation. It is quite common for digestive issues to occur or be exacerbated during PMS, pregnancy, as well as menopause, all times of hormonal changes. Hormonal reflex zones include bladder 2, gallbladder 20, and small intestine 13, sanjiao 15 areas, as well as bumps or tenderness along the kidney and liver channels on the lower thigh, that is liver 9 and inner yin areas. Treatment points are small intestine 3, which is considered to affect the pituitary and releases bladder 2. 
Bladder too, once it is released, can be needled. Inner yin, that is level with liver nine, but on the kidney channel. And bladder 66, tong gu, the penetrating valley. Bladder 66 is a foot mirror of small intestine three. It is a water point on a water channel, hence related to hormones, which we can consider to be the yin essence. Tong means to penetrate or to communicate like a diplomat. This is what hormones do. They mediate, they open, penetrate, communicate. Interestingly enough, there is an abdominal tongu also, kidney 20, at the level of REN13. But the connection of bladder 66 to digestion tends to be more with the intestines and not so much with the stomach. There are conditions that typically affect the digestion and which have clear physiological connection with digestion. However, when treating a patient, I consider their full medical history and obtain as many palpatory findings as I can in order to assess what conditions might be contributing to a weakness in the body or might help a pathology take hold. Each patient is unique and patients do not always fall into nice, neat categories. A concussion or even a shoulder injury can be a trigger for problems in the body that seems otherwise totally unrelated to the injury. Prior to addressing the digestive problem, I address the patient or what we might call their general terrain or their constitution based on the medical history and the palpatory findings. That terrain might include digestive issues or it might not. It might include these contributing factors like immune nervous system, diaphragm, hormones, etc., blood pressure, etc., or it might include other things that are unique to their medical history. If the patient came for digestive issues, first address the terrain and only then address the digestive problem. If you address only the digestive problem, you are lowering your chances at success and the longevity of the effect of the treatment because you're leaving holes, areas of weakness that have not been addressed and which can conceivably pull the patient back to the pattern of disharmony. When the body has a habitual pattern that is negatively impacting its ability to heal, that pattern does not have to be related to the main symptoms. By pulling the pattern out of balance, it is draining the body and can prevent it from assuming new, healthier patterns. Now let's look at the areas of the body that reflects digestive pathologies. <clears throat> First, we should check the SCM because of the vagus nerve and its strong correlation with organs of digestion. The SCM should be palpated with a flat part of your fingers, not the tip, and palpated along downwards in three or four sections. Sometimes you will feel tightness and the patient will not notice it until you give them a comparison or of a more neutral zone. The middle and at times the lower part of the SCM can also reflect the thyroid. And of course, you have stomach nine here, Yan Ying, welcome human. Stomach nine is considered a primitive reflex reflex. <clears throat> that is for issues like uncontrolled eating, vomiting, etc. Stomach nine is considered a bridge between the brain and the body, reflecting the connection between the neural signals and the physical tissue. To release the SCM, use opposite side San Jiao 8, one third down from the elbow, or opposite side San Jiao 5. These San Jiao points are needled towards the small intestine channel. Also, consider stomach 41, needled towards kidney 6, and kidney points, usually kidney seven or kidney nine. Yamamoto, who is famous for his scalp acupuncture, has a whole system of diagnosing based on the SCM, with each organ reflecting here. For this diagnosis, you press with just one finger and with the tip. This diagnostic system works best with patients sitting or standing, and less so with a patient lying down 
as now the gravity changes and the tension on the SCM and the fascia around it change too. Because I treat with patients lying down, I have created a rough shortcut to the system and utilize it in a far less sophisticated manner. I still palpate the SCM in three or four sections with a flat part of the fingers, using three or four fingers, so I do not get the subtlety of which organ might, might be indicated. And basically, I release the SCM with what I call Sanjiao 22, which I take as a rather large area that includes the whole treatment zone Yamamoto uses, looking for the point that best releases the SCM and other findings on the abdomen. Though I miss out on correlating an exact spot on the SCM with an organ and then refine the treatment point location using that, I find that this rougher method using a larger search area around Sanjiao 22 works well and is actually faster for me. People ask me why I call this Sanja 22 when perhaps calling it Ta Yang as in the extra point or any other name might be as accurate or more. After all, the area co contains Sanja 21 as well as gallbladder 6 and 7 and even border on Sanja 20 and gallbladder 8. The reason is that Sanja 22 is called He Liao, He Harmony and Sanja 22 is the only point that has this character in its name, which might be surprising given that we think of acupuncture as restoring or enabling harmony. Liao, which is often translated as a bone hole, has the bone character on the left and to soar or wings flying or the sound of the wind on the right, like wings swishing or wind going through a conch in other words, Liao connect, connotes the ability to amplify something, like when the wind goes through a conch or a bone. In this case, the name suggests that this area can amplify harmony. Yamamoto describes a number of somatotopes, areas on the scalp that map or reflect the whole body. Somatotope I though not as famous as Yamamoto's original skull points on the front, is actually a very effective mapping. Notice that Sanjiao 22 is in the general cervical vicinity. Prior to mapping the problem or pain area on somatotope I, one uses either the cervical, lumbar, or thoracic area, and then the area of the body of somatotope I, if it was not a cervical, lumbar, or thoracic problem. This is done according to the elbow. If there is pressure pain just in front of the lateral epicondyle, that is large intestine 11 area, it indicates to use the cervical area. Pain just in front of the medial epicondyle, heart 3 area, indicates lumbar, and pain just below lung 5 indicates the thoracics. In my experience, the occurrence of cervical by far outnumbers the occurrences of lumbar findings on the elbow, with thoracic outcomes being far and few between. This makes sense to me, given that if the neck is not free, it will transmit structural and nerve imbalances all the way down the spine and the rest of the body. Note that the cervical treatment area is around Sanjiao 22, although <clears throat> It does not ex extend in the same area as the treatment area of the organs as mapped on the SCM. This is how I came up with a shortcut, which I call Sanjiao 22, to release the SCM, and often address pain issues throughout the body. However, <clears throat> I do not use Sanjiao 22 up front. I check and use all the body points that I want to check against the different reflexes, and only then and after I ran out of ideas for body points, do I use Sanja 22? This is not because it is a last resort, but because it can be too powerful and then mask all the other reflexes because of its connection to the brain. This means that if I use Sanja 22 first or other skull points first, the brain may no longer sense the torques and tensions on the fascia, the reflexes we find on the abdomen 
and if that happens, we are unable to confirm the usefulness of body points, <clears throat> which means we can miss on good strategies that might be essential for the patient. Go ahead and check Sanjiao 22 for effectiveness right up front, but hold off on using it until you've used all your other points. This allows you to create a much more diverse treatment strategy that has a better chance of lasting. It is a bit like taking insurance, attacking the problem from a number of angles and not using just one angle that seems to knock off a reflex. If a point affects many reflexes on the patient's abdomen and neck, and it fits with a patient's medical history, it probably should be used, even if only as insurance, even if the reflexes were already cleared by other points. <coughs> REN 17 is considered an anxiety reflex with normal pressure. However, with harder pressure, it reflects the esophagus. This is the only place in the body I would apply hard pressure on, and it can be done here because you're pressing on a bone. The treatment would usually be spleen three and pericardium points, determined by whether there is pressure pain on pericardium eight. That is, if there is pressure pain on pericardium eight, use pericardium three and five, metal water. And if pericardium 8 has no pressure pain on it, use either pericardium 4, three fingers below P3, or use pericardium 6. REN15 is another emotional reflex, often referred to as the so-called worry reflex. When you find pressure pain pressing up and to the left, it reflects cardiac issues. From a digestion perspective, REN15 can reflect acid reflux. The treatment for this is also spleen 3 and pericardium. REN 12 is the moo point of the stomach and also the meeting point of all the full organs. It reflects the stomach as well as weak or slow movement of the foo in general, meaning slow digestion. REN 12 is also the starting point of the meridians and can indicate sluggish circulation. Direct moxa on REN12 will bring out a weak pulse. And it can also reflect stress, especially stress in people whose stress affects their digestion. The treatment is to release the neck, usually with Sanjiao 8 or Sanjiao 5, using kidney points, most commonly kidney 9, using the stomach chi points, the bumps along the stomach channel, all the way down to stomach 41, and finally, using the immune points. Check out all the different options before using the immune points, because the immune points tend to release REN12 fully, and then you will no longer be able to assess the usefulness of Sanjiao 8, Kidney 9, or Stomach Qi, and whether to use those or not. So assess whether those points are useful by assessing whether they reduce or eliminate the pressure pain on REN12 and other areas. And only then, after you've used those ones that you chose, use the immune points. Stomach 21 reflects the stomach also. It typically shows with ulcers. On the right, stomach 21 shows when there is a stomach ulcer, while on the left, it shows when the ulcer is lower down, as in duodenal ulcers. The treatment here is spleen 4 and pericardium 6, as well as releasing the nervous system by releasing the neck. Stomach 34 can also release stomach 21. The two are related by name. Stomach 34, the Xi, the accumulation point of the stomach, is Yang Qiu, the beam hill, and stomach 21, which reflects the stomach, is Liang Men, the beam gate. A beam across REN12 from stomach 21 to the other stomach 21 reflects the pancreas. It is often raised and does not require any pressure to feel. You feel a bump there. In other cases, the beam will not be complete and may not cover the full area going across from stomach 21 to stomach 21. It can also be just on one side, often on the right. 
This is named pancreatitic abdomen and is common in pancreatitis, both chronic and acute. The treatment is kidney 6 with kidney 27. The adrenal treatment as an anti-inflammatory treatment. Add lung 5 to boost the anti-inflammatory effect. Lung 5, the water point on the metal meridian, strengthens the kidneys, its so-called daughter. Spleen 5 is also an anti-inflammatory point, and its effect is enhanced with OQ, direct moxa. The liver affects digestion in the digestive tract proper and is also a digestive organ once the digestate is transported to it from the small intestine, breaking down molecules that are now in the bloodstream. It reflects on the right side, under the ribs, and in some cases on liver 14, on the ribs. Sharp pain here is considered liver excess and is treated with right side kidney 7, spleen 7, heart 3, and pericardium 4, three fingers below P3. These are all on the right side. Dull pain is considered a liver deficiency and is treated with liver 1 on the right. Fatty liver is treated with liver 8 and stomach 25 with liver 13 all on the right side. The gallbladder reflects more laterally. For patients with stones or history of stones, tap on the area with four fingers moving to cover the area. The reflex is considered active if the patient feels pain when you tap. The treatment is right side metal water of the Shaoyang, that is right side gallbladder 43 and 44, and right side Sanjiao 1 and 2. On the back, use small intestine 11, right T2 and right T10 watos. The navel reflects the small intestine. This is tested with a whole palm pressing on the navel. Treat spleen 9 and check either the combination of small intestine 1 and 2 or small intestine 3 as a standalone. The navel also has other reflex options not with full palm pressure, but with regular pressure on more specific points. Ren 9 can be another emotional reflex, often named sadness reflex, and in that case it is best treated with spleen 3 and pericardium. It can also reflect the small intestine being part of the navel underneath, which is the small, where the small intestine folds. Ren 9 is called shui fan, dividing the water and dividing fluid separating pure from turbid is what the small intestine does. When this reflects small intestine, the treatment of choice is, e is either small intestine 3 or the combination of small intestine 1 and 2. When you feel a pulse at REN9, this signifies a weakness of the mesenterium and is treated using inner yin, the point on the kidney channel that is level with liver 9 and side gallbladder 27, which is level with REN4, taken all the way to the side, under the iliac crest, in the gluteus medius. Of course, a patient can have pressure pain and pulsing at REN9, and have all three of these, in which case, treat all three. Just below kidney 16 is a reflection of the adrenals. If it shows, treat kidney 6 and kidney 27 although one often uses kidney 7 and 27, or kidney 9 and 27, or kidney 7, 10 and 27. Pressure pain all around the navel, say at at least three or four spots, is often a reflection of allergies, especially nasal allergies. Release the navel with spleen 9 and the immune points, and then you can needle the remaining spots around the navel. Right stomach 2627 is a very common finding both in patients with digestive disorders as well as patients in general. It sits over the ileocecal valve and hence reflects it with issues like inflammation and infection, appendicitis, SIBO, and yeast overgrowth 
all tend to show as pressure pain on stomach 26, 27 on the right side. Your first go-to points to release right stomach 26, 27 are spleen 9, the immune points, and the anti-inflammatory stomach 41, meaning stomach 41 slightly lateral to the regular one and needled at an angle towards gallbladder 40. Right stomach 26, 27 is also a reflection of immune issues, of lung issues, of a pelvic shift, as well as the kidney's ability for regeneration. The left spleen line below the navel reflects the descending colon and shows with issues such as constipation and diverticulosis. The treatment points are spleen 5 and spleen 9, metal water of the spleen channel, inner yin level with liver 9 on the kidney channel, and large intestine and large in 1 and large intestine 2, metal water of the large intestine and the immune points. Stomach 30 can reflect inflammatory conditions in the intestines and can also be a circulatory reflex, more commonly on the left side. Either spleen 4 or liver 4 are the suggested treatment points to release stomach 30. Liver 4, tsong feng, that which confers authority on the center, is mentioned in Ling Shu 2 as a point that harmonizes the center. It is related to stomach 30, qi jie, by name. Jie has the seal or authority character inside movement, creating the character jie, a thoroughway. And feng in liver 4 has the same component on the left of the hand radical. Full palm pressure on the inguinal on either side or both sides reflects bloating and is treated with spleen 9. While on the front, we look for pressure pain areas that serve as reflexes that are then used to select remote points that release pressure pain on the reflex, on the back, the reflex and treatment points are the same, unless the reflex is quite strong and painful. In other words, when you find pressure point at, say, T5, you needle it, basically trying to open up the nerve path. But if the pressure pain on T5 is very strong, release it first remotely by, say, small intestine 9 10 or do 2. When looking for an active reflex on the back, you're looking not just for pressure pain, but also puffiness, gumminess, extra tissue feeling, or congestion around the vertebrae. Do not limit yourself to being between the vertebrae. It can be same level as the vertebrae, under the vertebrae, you know, slightly above, whatever. It's not an exact definition like the Watteaus are supposed to be. I tend to use the Watteau line a lot more than the Do line, and it can even be up to one sun out. On the front, I retain needles for 10 to, for 15 to 20 minutes. Then the patient turns over and the back treatment is retained for 10 to 15 minutes. It is a shorter treatment time. I always treat both sides, usually front first. So I cannot speak for the effectiveness of doing back treatments only or how long one should retain needles if the back is done as a standalone treatment. The main areas to check for digestive disorders are T5, which is related to the stomach and the esophagus, T6 to T8, related to the pancreas, T7 to T9 on the right, including the inner bladder line, is related to the liver. Use left bladder 35 first to release it and only then needle it. T10 on the right is related to the gallbladder. T2 on the right, when found with T10 also, on the right is related to the gallbladder as well. T11, T12 show in almost all digestive disorders and sugar metabolism problems, and many patients have clear puffy gummy feelings here. Small intestine 11 on the right reflects the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, and the intestines. 
If a reflex is too strong to be needled, release it. My starting points to release the back reflexes are do to for anywhere along the spine, sacroiliac ligaments, especially for lower spine, small intestine 9, 10 for the thoracic spine, and also do 16. I also, you can use also other reflexes first to see if they're influencing the stubborn ones. In other words, if you have a stubborn reflex on, say, T5, see if T11, T12, release it. And the other way around. If T11, T12 is very painful, see if T5 will release T11, T12. Back points love direct moxa. And adding OQ will strengthen the treatment and stabilize the patient faster. In the next section, we will look at points that are commonly used for digestive disorders. This is a bit like assembling our alphabet, our basic components, as we start building up sentences, our diagnosis, protocols, and ways to apply them. So just like with the alphabet, let's go through the channels in their order. Although the lungs supply oxygenation to metabolism and the diaphragm is involved in the movement and space of the digestive tract, generally I do not use lung points specifically for digestive issues. Lung 5 can be added for some anti-inflammatory treatments since it is the water point on the metal meridian. It is therefore a point that can help amplify kidney points in providing an adrenal anti-inflammatory effect. You can use lung 5 or lung 8 for this. However, in that case, they are use, they're being used as a supporting role, and it is the kidney points that are the main points. The large intestine channel is one we would expect to find the core points at least as far as affecting the large intestine. This is only partly so. Large intestine 1 and 2 are the metal and water points and are used together as an anti-inflammatory treatment that can affect both the gums, the teeth, and the bowels. I use this combination, or more often just large intestine 2, for diverticulosis. Large intestine 1, Shang Yang, the young trader, suggests the function of the large intestine in exchanging. Large intestine 2, <coughs> Er Jian, the second section, and large intestine 3, San Jian, the third section, suggest a relationship to the three sections of the large intestine, ascending, transverse, and descending colon. Of these, large intestine 2 is the one that I find to be most clearly related and is very clearly anti-inflammatory for the intestines, as well as the gums and the eyes. Although large intestine 4 is by name He Gu, the unifying valley, supposed to be strongly related to food, Gu, production, in spite of its common use in digestive issues by many traditions, I do not use this point much in general. Large intestine 6 is an anti-inflammatory point affecting the gums. Taken a bit lower than the text location, between where the index and middle finger fall when you interlace the thumbs. The immune points between large intestine 10 and 11 on the edge of the bone is a point that is used a lot in digestive issues. As the digestive tract is very closely related to immunity, it is in contact with foreign substances constantly and contains a large percentage of our lymphatics. The immune points will be your strongest points to clear pressure pain on REN12 as well as on right 2627 Large intestine 15 is a detox point and is used to clear the liver as related to chemical or drug exposure. It is not a digestive point per se and its effect is on the liver and through the liver it can affect digestion. Here we see large intestine 2 and know that there are two locations, the traditional one and one, one joint proximal. Uh, the location for large intestine 6 
and underneath the location for the immune point between large intestine 10 and 11, slightly more towards the Sun Zhao channel on the edge of the bone. Of course, one would expect points on the stomach channel to play a major role in digestive disorders, especially since the stomach channel includes the lower hair points of the small and large intestines as well. In practice, however, I tend to give greater emphasis to spleen points and other channels for treatment. But digestive issues do reflect clearly on the stomach channel in the abdomen. Stomach 9 reflects what one might dub as primitive reflex reflex. That is things like nausea, vomiting, uncontrolled eating, etc. It can also be a reflex of the vagus nerve, that is, how the nervous system is affecting digestion. Stomach 11-12 area, the scalings, on the left side reflect the state of the stomach acid. Stomach 21 reflects the stomach. Right stomach 26-27 area reflects the ileocecal valve. Stomach 30, qi chong or qi jie, the surging qi or the qi thoroughway, can reflect the chong and inflammation or gas in the digestive tract. In terms of treatment, I rarely use stomach 36, except for cases of weak stomach acid leading to acid reflux, in which case I use stomach 36 on the left. The bumps along the stomach channel below stomach 36, close to the bone, all the way down to stomach 41, are called stomach chi points. These can be used, they are good supporting points in digestive issues, especially when the pulse is lacking a wave quality or a slippery quality and a sense of forward movement in the pulse. Stomach 41 is part of the stomach chi group, but has a unique position in that it is a hinge that controls much of the structure of the body. The weight of the whole torso comes down onto stomach 41, and hence stomach 41 can affect the whole torso, especially the pelvic girdle. Taking stomach 41 slightly more laterally, hugging the extensor digitorum muscle, and needle towards gallbladder 40 is an anti-inflammatory point and is used in cases of bacterial or yeast overgrowth showing on right stomach 26-27. Stomach 44 and stomach 45 are the metal water points of the stomach channel and are used for constipation on the left side while adding right side gallbladder 43 and 44. The spleen channel is used more for treatments and has less reflexes for diagnosis than the stomach channel since it is more it is more lateral than the digestive tract for the most part. The left spleen line below the navel does reflect the descending colon, and left spleen 20 does reflect circulation. Spleen 3, the earth on earth point, and the shoe stream transportation point is a major point for digestive digestion, especially when there are emotional components also. It is a point that helps when there is sugar metabolism issues. Spleen 3 is the go-to point for all muscle problems and should be looked at in cases of intestinal cramps as well. I use Spleen 4 primarily for ulcers with pericardium 6. This combination can also be used in other stomach patterns. Spleen 5 is an anti-inflammatory point and therefore used a lot in digestive patterns. With spleen 9, it is used on the left for diarrhea, with liver 4 and liver 8 being on the right. Spleen 5 is also part of the protocol for treating pancreatitis. Spleen 6 is used for conversion and absorption of food into blood, and is used in all disorders where there has been blood loss. Spleen 7 is a stop bleeding point. Spleen 9 is another major point on the spleen channel. 
you will often find loose falling down of the tissue there with age as gravity pulls down and the spleen loses its rising capacity. This is the point of choice for anyone who has had appendicitis and anyone with, pre with pressure pain over right stomach 26-27, pressure pain around the navel, or full palm pressure over the inguinal. It is used with spleen 6 and pericardium points for blood pressure issues which are often contributing factors in digestive disorders. Spleen points resonate well with pericardium points. Although the spleen and the lungs are both tie-in channels, I do not automatically associate spleen points with the hand tie-in lung points. The small intestine channel is another channel one might expect to be very closely associated with digestion. Small intestine 11 on the right reflects and treats digestive issues. It is quite common to find a puffy, mushy, raised tissue on small intestine 11, about the size of a quarter or a little less. Use the pressure pain here as a reflex to assess the effectiveness of other points, and also needle the edges of this gummy, puffy area. Small intestine 1 and 2, or small intestine 3, are used to treat digestive issues, especially when there is pressure pain on the navel or on RIN9. Small intestine 3 in particular is related to the pituitary and to hormones, both of which affect digestion. Small intestine 1 and 2 are the metal water points of the small intestine channel, and I would tend to use them together. The naming of the points here suggests their connection to the actual intestine. Small intestine 2 is Qian Gu, in front of the valley, and small intestine 3 is Hua Xi, behind the ravine. This division of before and after is similar to the way large intestine 2 and 3 are named as second and third sections. And so with the small intestine, we also see a suggestion relating to three parts of the organ that the channel is related to. The other place where we see Tian and Ho before and after is around Du 20, with Du 19, Hua Ding, behind the vertex, and Du 21, Tian Ding, in front of the vertex. This associates small intestine 2 and 3 with Du 20, and what is underneath Du 20, the pituitary, the controller of hormones. Small intestine 1, Xiao Zhe, the smaller marsh, suggests a connection to the duodeno, which is marsh-like, leaving the impression that small intestine 2 would be associated with the jejunum and small intestine 3 with the ilium. I cannot say that I can fully correlate each point to that particular section, but I do find a correlation between these three points and the small intestine in general, though not as location specific as the point names might suggest. I generally try small intestine 3 first to see its effect and then compare it to the effect of small intestine 1 and 2 together. And then I choose either small intestine 3 alone or small intestine 1 and 2 in combination. On the bladder channel, the primary connection is via the shoe points. Here we have the six flowers, bladder 17, 18, and 20, a moxa combination that is used frequently for all digestive disorders, and yao yang, the lumbar eye used for constipation, somewhat more effective than bladder 25, the actual um, shoe point of the large intestine. I use bladder 2 often in digestive disorders when there is a tight diaphragm. On the leg, we have bladder 58 and 57 area that is commonly used for hemorrhoids. Bladder 63, Jin Men, the metal gate, is a point used for boils and explosive diarrhea, what in TCM might be classified as damp heat toxicity. Bladder 63 is a good supporting point for spleen points when there are these damp heat type conditions. Bladder 66, Tonggu, 
the penetrating valley, affects hormones, and hence can affect digestion when it is rooted or related to hormonal issues. The kidney channel involvement in digestion is largely due to its overlap with the chum, and the kidneys also mean adrenals, so kidney points can supply an anti-inflammatory effect. Kidney 6, 7, or 9 can all release REN12 and are part of the adrenal treatment. They should always be checked in any autoimmune disorder. Kidney 27, Shu Fu, is the other point that constitutes the adrenal treatment. It is the Shu of the Fu organs by name, and since digestion is highly dependent on the movement of the Fu, kidney 27, at least theoretically, is closely related to digestion. When you press on both kidney 27, it gives the body a sympathetic signal. There are times when there is too strong a movement in the intestines, like in food poisoning, and the signal to the intestines is lacking in sympathetic tone. If you release abdominal findings by pressing on both kidney 27s, it suggests that the body needs some more sympathetic tone. I usually will not needle kidney 27 in those cases, but use it as a test and then treat the food poisoning point under the second toe. However, kidney 27 on its own with nothing to do with sympathetic um, input is a point that's used as part of the adrenal treatment with the lower kidney points. Kidney 2, Rangu, is by name possibly related to digestion as it is the blazing valley. The valley, Gu, can be seen as food. There is also a path that described from spleen 7, Lo Gu, the leaking valley, to kidney 2, Rang Gu, the blazing valley. Unfortunately, I have not found the key to success using this model, but it is something to keep in mind. Pericardium points are generally good companion points for spleen and liver points. They are primarily used to affect the autonomic nervous system and circulation. Pericardium 6 affects the esophagus and the chest. Pericardium 4, three fingers below pericardium 3, increases blood circulation in the abdomen. Sanjiao points affect primarily the autonomic nervous system and sphincters. Jiao, burner, also means anxious. Sun Jiao 1 and 2 on the right side are used to treat gallbladder with right side gallbladder 43-44. Sun Jiao 8, one third below the elbow, is used to release the SCM and therefore releasing the vagus nerve. And that is how it affects digestion. Sun Jiao 5 can be used instead of Sun Jiao 8, especially if the pulse is rapid. Sun Jiao 16 reflects the glands in the neck and therefore calls for the use of the immune points and can be related to digestion in that way. Sun Jiao 22, He Liao, as well as gallbladder 7 and 8 area, is used to release all the organs as in the Yamamoto Ypsilon point. On the gallbladder channel, gallbladder 7 and 8 affect all the organs, including digestion, and can release the SCM. Gallbladder 13, 15, 16, 17, and 18 all affect digestion, IBS, etc., especially when there is an emotional component involved, especially fear. Behind gallbladder 21 releases the jaw and hence affects that component of digestion. Gallbladder 24 area and laterally reflects the gallbladder. Gallbladder 29 in front of the trochanter relaxes the diaphragm and in that way supports digestion. Gallbladder 43 and 44 used together in combination, both on the right side, are used for gallstones. 
They are also used on the right side for constipation, with stomach 44 and 45 used on the left. Liver points have a major influence on digestion. From a Western perspective, the liver itself is a digestion organ. And from a Chinese perspective, it is a common factor due to the popular pattern of liver invading spleen. Liver 4 releases stomach 30 and the psoas. It can be used to release the liver and harmonize the center. It should be taken one sun below the ankle, the location that is prescribed in Ling Shu chapter 2. Liver 5 with Okiomoxa is an anti-inflammatory point for the lower jaw. For digestion-related issues, spleen 5 would usually be the first choice, but liver 5 should be considered, especially if there are reproductive issues as well. Liver 8 is the point of choice for cysts and any accumulations of extra tissue, which is a concern for the intestines and with diverticulosis. It is used for fatty liver, also followed by right stomach 25 and right liver 13. Liver 12 is related to the autonomic nervous system and congestion here can also disrupt the blood supply to the lower abdomen and its digestive organs. Liver 13 is used on the right side for fatty liver with right stomach 25. And liver 14 is used as a reflex for the liver itself. The do is related to the autonomic nervous system and hence to its effect on digestion. In particular, look at T5, which innervates the stomach, T6 to T8, related to the pancreas, and T11 and 12, which supply the abdomen. They are also called the sugar points. Many people have puffy, gummy um, adherences on T11, T12, and are important to be needled. Do two, needled upwards, can release the whole spine. Do 23 and 24 should also be checked in digestive issues, especially when there are emotional components. I use the REN points as reflexes rather than as treatment points when there are digestive issues. This is because the REN points are generally local points that are right over the actual problem in digestive issue, and it is my preference not to needle locally. REN 17, with hard pressure pain, can reflect the esophagus. REN 15 can reflect the stomach and acid reflux. REN 12 reflects the stomach and the foo organs, movement in general. REN 9 reflects the small intestine. Let's look at digestive conditions and standard treatment protocols for them. The mouth is the beginning of the digestive tract, and the health of the mouth can affect and reflect other parts of the system. The breakdown of food starts in the mouth. The Yang Ming channels of the stomach and large intestine are related to the mouth, the gums, and the teeth, and to inflammatory conditions. Inflamed gums are treated with large intestine 6, the lower of the large intestine, which branches into the teeth. Take this point at about two sun above large intestine 5, rather than the textbook location of three sun above, and look for a loose, puffy tissue. This is preferably a direct moxa point. When you interlace the hands, squeeze both large intestine 4s together, and the point will be approximately between the tip of the index and the middle fingers. You can have the patient touch the gum or the tooth, with their tongue, and then again when you press on large intestine 6 to see if large intestine 6 reduces the pain in the gum. Other points to consider are large intestine 1 and 2, the metal water points of the large intestine, as water overcomes fire, and metal, being the mother of water, amplifies this anti-inflammatory effect. Stomach 44 and 45 can also be tried with the same principle, 
though less common, there are times I will find that Stomach 43, Master Dong's Nan Jing, does the job. Large Intestine 15, or anywhere between Large Intestine 15 and 14, can also be useful. The Large Intestine lower channel passes through here as well as the teeth. For mouth sores, use liver 3 and spleen 3. Although in TCM mouth sores are seen as stomach fire, mouth sores are a sign of liver excess, hence the use of liver 3. And spleen 3 addresses the location, the flesh. TMJ is not considered a digestive issue. However, these are mastication muscles and can affect one's ability to chew. More importantly, a tight jaw can affect tightness in the esophagus and the sphincters in the digestive tract from the upper pyloric all the way to the anal sphincter. Releasing the jaw will often release the nervous system and hence facilitate smoother digestion. Use stomach 5-6 area to test your treatment points. TMJ also commonly comes with tight cervicals and tight SCM. So those two should be released with your chosen treatment points. The treatment consists of kidney nine or kidney seven. Check which point releases the jaw the most. The dogma is that kidney nine is the preferred point, but kidney seven often does a better job. Then use Sanjiao eight, one third below the elbow. This is your strongest point the one that should release most of the pressure on the jaw. At times, Sanja 5 might work better, especially for patients with rapid pulse. The Sanjiao is needled at an angle laterally, slightly towards the small intestine channel, directed towards the small intestine channel. The arm should be with a palm down on the treatment table and not on the abdomen. If this position is uncomfortable, curling the shoulders forward too much for the patient, fi find and needle the point with a palm on the table, and then once the needle is in, you can move the hand to rest on the abdomen, releasing the curl in the shoulder. For any leftover tightness in the jaw, use the point just behind gallbladder 21. <clears throat> on some patients, this area is super tight, so therefore needling behind gallbladder 21 to needle the to release the jaw needs to have that shoulder released first with either spleen nine needled upwards towards the inner knee eye or inner yin which is on the kidney channel level with liver nine salivary gland issues such as infections swollen mumps or dryness belong in either the spleen domain or the kidney domain the main treatment point is kidney three needle towards the Achilles. For infections, also you add the immune points between large intestine 10 and 11 on the edge of the bone. For dryness of the, of the salivary glands, use do 15. Disorders of the esophagus tend to be of either movement, as in spasms or constriction, or of inflammation. Esophageal varices tend to be related to liver problems that created a backflow of blood. Acid reflux, while affecting the esophagus, will be discussed in the next slide. The reflex for esophageal problems is REN17. This is one situation where you press quite hard on REN17. Pain or discomfort on light pressure reflects anxiety or the nervous system <clears throat> not the esophagus. The esophagus shows upon deeper and stronger pressure. They may also be pressure pain showing on the upper thoracics in the back. The treatment is spleen 3 plus pericardium, meaning check pericardium 8, and if it is painful, use pericardium 3 and 5, the metal water of the pericardium. And if there is no discomfort on pericardium 8, Use either pericardium 4, three fingers below pericardium 3, or pericardium 6, whichever releases REN17 and other findings the most. Note 
that I use pericardium 3 not medial to the tendons, but between the tendons, in the center of the elbow crease. Also, release the SCM and vagus nerve by using Sanjiao 8. This is one-third below the elbow. If you slide your finger lightly up along the Sanjiao channel from the wrist, your finger will naturally stop at this Sanjiao 8. Patients with rapid pulse will often respond better to Sanjiao 5. On the back, use DO2 to release the nervous system and bladder 32, affecting the sacral parasympathetic ganglia, and then the sensitive points between T2 and T7. If those are still quite painful after using DO2 and bladder 40, 32, use small intestine 910 needled outwards towards the deltoid first to release the upper thoracics and then you can needle and moxa them. Tightness or constriction in the esophagus can be accompanied by a tight diaphragm and releasing the diaphragm is important. Drinking warm water to open up the esophagus, especially before eating, tends to be helpful for most people. Acid reflux, heartburn, also shows upon hard pressure on REN17, as well as regular pressure on REN15 and the upper thoracics, though usually it will not show above T4, whereas esophageal spasm can show above T4. The treatment is similar to that of other esophageal issues. Spleen 3 plus pericardium, meaning check pericardium 8 and needle accordingly. Pericardium 3 and 5 if pericardium 8 is painful, pericardium 4 or pericardium 6 if pericardium 8 is not painful. Release the SCM using opposite side Sanjiao 8. Use DO2 and T4 and 5 and T7 to release the nerve impulses to the stomach. Acid reflux arises when the cardioesophageal sphincter is loosening, allowing acid to rise into the esophagus. This can have a number of causes. One is that the nervous system is not adjusting well and the sphincter gets the wrong message to relax. Hence the importance of releasing the vagus nerve, the SCM. If the body is not supplying enough sympathetic input, it is not closing off the digestion process. Patients with this etiology will often have their abdominal reflexes released when you press on both kidney 27s together towards the center, the, the center, the sternum, as this is supposed to temporarily send a sympathetic message to the body. Another cause is weak stomach acid. Although the reflux is acidic, the problem here is not that the acid is too strong, but rather too weak. If the acid was contained within the stomach, it would not be a problem. It is a problem when it leaks. That is what creates the burn. The leak will occur when the acid is weak before, because weak stomach acid means slower digestion and a buildup of gas of chyme. The indigested food and gas are now pressing on the sphincter and the chyme starts to leak upwards, creating the burning because the esophageal wall is not meant to withstand even weaker acid. Weak stomach acid can reflect on left stomach 11 area. The treatment is the same as all other esophageal problems, although I will often use spleen 4 and pericardium 6 as the main spleen pericardium combination rather than spleen 3 and any other pericardium point option, although either option might work for a particular patient. Release the SCM and use DO2 and the upper thoracics on the back. The main difference is that you also want to increase the acidity of the stomach and address the left stomach 11 pressure pain. Use left stomach 36 to increase the acidity and use the left ear endocrine to release left stomach 11. You can then needle and or occu stomach 11. 
The main issue we encounter with the stomach is gastritis, culminating in ulcers. Chronic gastritis reflects around REN12 and can show along the REN and kidney lines from REN10 to REN13, as well as around stomach 21. Once gastritis is an ulcer, it will reflect more clearly on stomach 21. Stomach ulcers reflect on the right side as the stomach entry leans to the right. On the left, it is more likely to reflect a duodenal ulcer. This has a strong correlation with yin wei patterns and can show pain and puffiness on spleen 9 as well. The treatment is spleen 4 plus pericardium 6, with spleen 4 possibly being on either side. And you can use spleen 9 as a reflex as well as stomach 21. Release the SCM with Sanjiao 8 and treat the immune points between large intestine 10 and 11 on the edge of the bone. Nausea is a symptom that manifests as digestion, but can have many other causes that are related to the neuroendocrine system. Amongst the causes of nausea, our motion sickness, pregnancy, intense pain and emotions, brain disorders such as concussions and tumors, poisons from food, allergies or medications, especially chemo, can be the trigger of nausea also. There are also actual GI causes like gallbladder or bowel obstructions. These affect the neurochemical balance and create a slowing down of motility in the digestive tract that then results in queasiness and nausea. In terms of reflexes to check for nausea, the REN line from REN15 down to REN10 may show, but often this is an area you may want to or need to avoid checking if the patient feels very queasy at the time of the treatment. Stomach 9 area shows in most patients with nausea, and light pressure here is usually tolerable but avoid pressing with regular pressure until you, you can ascertain that it does not trigger the nausea in the patient. REN22 may show on some patients. Treatment tends to address both the sus suspected cause as well as the autonomic nervous system. I tend to also take extra insurance and cover my bases with other possible causes unless they can very clearly be eliminated as causes. For example, it is always worth checking the ears and the neck in case there is a vestibular component, even if there is no dizziness involved. The treatment will always involve releasing the SCM and the nervous system with Sanjiao 8 and possibly pericardium as well. Not always pericardium 6, which is very famous for nausea, but often actually pericardium 4 three fingers below pericardium three, that might do a better job. Use kidney nine for motion sickness, though it tends to be quite useful for other kinds of nausea as well. Kidney nine has an affinity with the stomach. Kidney nine and large intestine 15 are the recommended combination for poisons such as nausea caused by, say, chemo. Check the ears at small intestine 17 and the mastoid process, and then use spleen 7 and Sancho 8 to release that. Check T4 on the back, also related to vestibular and eyes, and use the ear occiput point. This works especially well when there is dizziness accompanying. The innervation of the stomach comes from T4, T5, and as part of the back treatment, this area should can then be needled after it is released. Check liver and gallbladder and treat if found. For acute food poisoning, use the point under the second toe, where the tip of the toe touches the ball of the foot when you curl the second toe in towards the foot. The stomach chi points, any dents along the stomach channel before below stomach 40, close to the bone can be good supporting points also. The pancreas secretes insulin, a hormone, 
and the enzymes lipase, amylase, and protease that break down fats, carbs, and proteins. Therefore, a weak or inflamed pancreas means lesser enzymatic activity and reduces digestion and increases malabsorption. A weak pancreas can be one of the causes of bloating, gas, and diarrhea. Therefore, it is important to check the pancreas in patients who have gas, bloating, or diarrhea. The pancreas reflexes a beam across stomach 21. There may be pressure pain here, or there may be puffiness and extension, and the area might be raised. The treatment is kidney 6 and kidney 27. This is the so-called adrenal treatment. This is like supplying cortisol to overcome inflammation and regulate blood sugar. In cases of pancreatitis, spleen 5, an anti-inflammatory point, is added with ocumoxa, as well as lung 5, which supports the kidney water treatment, being that it is the water point on the metal meridian, the mother meridian of kidney water. Sugar imbalances are treated with spleen 3, rather than spleen 5. In diabetes, right stomach 22 is added, halfway on the line taken at a 45 degree angle from the navel to the ribs. Stomach 22, Guang Men, is a gate of gates and corresponds to the sphincter of Odi. On the back, use T11, T12 Watteaus, or the Du, and T6 to T8, as well as the right small intestine 11. Here is a picture of the OD point. Note that the point tends to be somewhat lateral to the stomach channel, so it's not exactly stomach 22. Take it halfway on the line at a 45 degrees between the navel and the ribs. Gallstones and biliary obstruction reflect on the right side on the edge of the ribs, lateral to the nipple line. It shows not so much as pressure pain when pressing under the ribs, but when tapping with your four fingers over the edge of the ribs. On the back, gallbladder, gall, gallbladder issues will show as pressure pain or puffiness on right T2, right T10, and right small intestine 11. The treatment is metal water of Shaoyang on the right side, that is Sanjiao 1 and Sanjiao 2, and gallbladder 43 and, and 44, all on the right. REN6 is useful, but should not be used when the patient's pulse is slow. You can also use the right stomach chi points, the bumps along the, cha the stomach channel close to the bone, needled down and in towards the bone. I find this works better than Dan, dan Nan Shui, I always start the stomach chi points with at least one on the left, and only then I do the right, and then I can have a number of points on the right side on the stomach chi line. For patients with a history of stones or who've had the gallbladder removed, the OD point can be used. I do not use the OD point with current obstruction and inflammation because it is too local and can aggravate the inflammation. Gallbladder inflammation can be tied to pancreatic inflammation. So look at the state of the pancreas as well and use either spleen 3 or spleen 5 and 9. On the back, treat T10 Watto on the right, T2 on the right, and surround small intestine 11 on the right and apply Ocumoxa. Diseases of the small intestine affect absorption directly and will show as bloating, diarrhea, fatigue, and weakness. In many ways, the small intestine is our powerhouse, and it is therefore not surprising that Ren4, Guan Yuan, the gate of what is primary, the Dan Tian, is the Mu of the small intestine. The main causations in the small intestine are infections, inflammations, and obstruction. The small intestine can reflect as pressure pain anywhere in the mid and lower abdomens. Pressure on different areas on the REN kidney and stomach meridians from REN10 down to REN4 can be a reflection of a small intestine problem, 
while pressure pain on the spleen line tends to reflect the large intestine more. The duodenum is located above REN10, and REN12 can reflect problems originating in the duodenum, but it is really below REN10 that you have no other organs in front of the intestine, and the small intestine reflects here more clearly. The main concentration of pressure pain reflecting small intestine disorders will tend to be around the navel. Apply your whole palm flat with pericardium 8 over the navel with light pressure to assess this rather than testing specific points. The exception is REN9, Shui Fan, dividing water which has an affinity to the small intestine that divides the pure and the impure. Pressure pain on REN9 can reflect a pathology inside the small intestine, while the feeling of a pulse at REN9 and around the navel is an indication of a weakness of the connective tissue, the mesentery, around the intestine. Obviously, the surrounding mesentery with its lymph and blood supply has a strong effect on what happens in what we opt to distinguish as the small intestine proper. So this distinction is a bit artificial. In most patients with a pulsing sensation on REN9, one can suspect a degraded performance of the small intestine, even though they may not necessarily complain of clear digestive symptoms. On the back, there may be pressure pain and puffiness on right small intestine 11. Bloating can also show as full palm pressure just below, uh, just above the inguinal. Although only the medial top part of this area borders the actual small intestine, the gas is pushing down and pressing the tissue here, kind of like being pulled down by gravity. So full palm pressure above the inguinal can also reflect the small intestine. The treatment should start first with addressing any mesentery weakness and providing the space for the intestines to operate. Use side gallbladder 27-28 to do that and eliminate much of the abdominal reflections. Side gallbladder 27-28 is basically level with REN4 but rather than being in the inguinal ligament, it is totally to the side, below gallbladder 26, as if the gallbladder meridian was going straight down. The point is below the iliac crest, and it is in the gluteus medius. Look for the ropey, tight sensation in the glute medius. This point is sometimes called mu shu, as it is between the mu, the front points, and the shu, the back points. It is especially indicated when there is pressure pain or pulsing on REN9. Patients with full, full palm pressure on the inguinal tend to respond to spleen 9, needle it upwards towards the inner knee eye. Check small intestine 1 and 2 in combination. These are the metal water points of the small intestine and hence can reduce inflammation or check small intestine 3 alone. Small intestine 1, Shaozi, the small marsh, might represent the duodenum, which is basically a pond or a marsh receiving the chyme, the bile and the pancreatic enzymes. Small intestine 2, Qianggu, before the valley, can represent the jejunum. Here is where the food, the gu, is being absorbed. And small intestine 3, who or she, after or behind the creek, can represent the ilium. The character she, for creek or ravine, contains the character gu within it. Therefore, both small intestine 2 and 3 seem to speak of gu, valley, or grain. On the back, surround right small intestine 11, 3 or 6 needles, and apply oculomoxa. In this picture, small intestine 11 is on the left, but for small intestine and digestive issues, you want to use the right side, small intestine 11. Some patients will not respond to the treatment on the front, especially ones with many areas of pressure pain in the abdomen and heightened sensitivity in the abdomen.
In such cases, consider starting on the back and use right small intestine first, then turn the patient over and now proceed with the front treatment. Of course, immune points can be quite helpful due to the strong immune orientation of the small intestine. Patients with low blood pressure will often respond best to the blood pressure treatment, spleen 6, spleen 9, pericardium, and under the third toe. Once this treatment is applied, then start using other points. For Crohn's patients, start with autoimmune treatment using kidney and lung points. That is systemic metal and water to overcome systemic inflammation, fire. In most autoimmune disorders, REN4 is indicated, the mu of the small intestine. Young fire, however, in the case of Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, this is not the case because you can be needling into an inflamed area. Instead, use side gallbladder 2728. Add the immune points between large intestine 10 and 11 on the edge of the bone. That is somewhat more like the Sun Zhao. On the back for Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, follow the same principle. Use the shoe of the young fire, UB27, to subdue inflammation. Look for the ropey feeling on the sacroiliac ligaments. Many patients with autoimmune disorders will have like a ping pong feeling here as a ropey tissue literally shifts from side to side on the sacroiliac ligaments. Then add bladder 42 needled outwards. This is the lung, the metal part and bladder 52 needled towards the spine, representing the water kidney part. On some patients, in my experience, a minority, you will find that the actual shoe points might be more effective. That is bladder 13 and bladder 23. The ileocecal valve is susceptible to inflammation as well as infection, bacteria, and yeast overgrowth. It reflects on right stomach 2627. A history of appendicitis and appendix removal can also show here, as this is an inflammation that may have been cleared with the appendix removal, but often leaves a weakness in the tissue surrounding. The operation scar may be as low as gallbladder 28 or stomach 30, and there may also be some pain on the scar but the main reflex is where the internal scar is over the appendix at right stomach 26, 27. The main treatment point is spleen nine, especially if spleen nine has a chubby dro dropping feeling or drooping quality to it. Spleen nine is by dogma, including in treatments of people with a history of appendicitis. While the right side will clear stomach 26, 27, I recommend using both sides, especially when indicated by what I call a chubby spleen line, meaning that the tissue here is loose and not tight adhering to the tibia. If spleen 2 is painful, use spleen 5 and 9. This is adding metal spleen 5 to the water point spleen 9. Spleen 5 is an anti-inflammatory point and should have direct moxa OQ added to it. Small intestine 3, or the combination of small intestine 1 and 2, should be checked also. As this is still partially a small intestine domain, it, this is the gate between the small intestine and the large intestine. Immune points should also be checked and used if they release reflexes, because of the close relationship of the ileocecal valve, the appendix, and lymph and immunity. Stomach 41, taken one tendon over from the gallbladder side and needled towards gallbladder 40 is an anti-inflammatory point. The textbook location of stomach 41 is between the hallucius longus and extensor digitorum longus. I prefer to take stomach 41 closer to spleen 5, if possible between the tibialis anterior and the hallucius longus, and I needle it towards kidney 6. On some people, the tibialis anterior and hallucius longus are congealed together, 
at the ankle and cannot be easily separated. In that case, I will go over laterally to the hallucius longus, but I still keep it as medial as possible and needle towards kidney 6. The anti-inflammatory stomach 41, although it is between the hallucius longus and extensor digitorum, will be more lateral to, to the second location and hug the extensor digitorum rather than the hallucius, and it is needle towards gallbladder 40. This is a point that can release right stomach 2627, the ileocecal valve, especially in cases of bacterial or yeast overgrowth. The large intestine can reflect on right stomach 2627 or anywhere on its path, though more typically it will show on the left spleen line below the navel. Here again, the main causes of disorder are the ability for movement and inflammation as reflected by the tissue muscles and mucosal membranes. This can manifest as pain, constipation, diarrhea, colitis, polyps, and cancer. When movement of the small muscle is impaired, it creates longer transit time, hence a greater chance of inflammation, and over the long term, tissue damage and changes. The movement of the smooth muscle is correlated to the nervous system, which is why there is such a common correlation between the state of emotions and the nervous system and the state of the bowels. Treatment, in general, might start with spleen 9 and the immune points. Due to the strong connection of emotions, the nervous system and the bowels also check the line between stomach 8 and do 24 and release the SCM to release the vagus nerve by using Sanjiao 8, one-third below the elbow. Consider large intestine 1 and 2 together or large intestine 3. Large intestine 1 and 2 can be anti-inflammatory being the metal water points. My impression, having no laboratory test to clarify it, is that the, they encourage motility and peristalsis. The point names suggest a connection with the actual intestines, divided into three parts. There is a clear reference to trading or exchanging with large intestine one, and then a second and a third space, which can be references to either the three parts of the intestines or to the in-between spaces, the flexures of the intestines. Qian could even be a reference to the actual tissue of the intestine, with the in-between or crack referring to water being absorbed here in the cracks. And as far as specific conditions, for diarrhea, use left spleen 5 and left spleen 9 with right-sided liver 4 and liver 8. For constipation, use left stomach 44 and left stomach 45, and right side gallbladder 43 and 44. The principle here is using the metal water points of earth on the left and of wood on the right. For diarrhea, use the yin channels as the zhang they hoard or pull in. For constipation, use the yang channels as the fu empty and move. For explosive diarrhea, use bladder 63, jin men, preferably with okumoxa. Bladder 63 is a point that one might say treats damp heat, as in diarrhea or skin eruptions with pus or boils. For constipation, check inner yin, basically level with liver 9 on the kidney channel, especially on the left. The adductors on the left side are fascially connected with the descending colon. However, one can use it on both sides as inner yin lifts and tones the perineal floor and the lower abdomen. For intestinal cramps, use spleen 3. For polyps, use liver 8 with ocumoxa. Liver 8 is the choice point for any cysts, fibroids, or extra growths. For bleeding, meaning blood in the stool rather than hemorrhoids, use spleen 7 with OQ and check for the underlying cause and treat according to that cause, for example, inflammation, cancer, etc. Spleen 8 
two fingers below spleen 9, where mastitone takes shenmen, kidney gate, is a point that can help heal tissue, or what is sometimes referred to as generating flesh kind of point. On the back, L5 Watto and Yao Yan, the lumbar eye, the dimple at the posterior ilia crest. Also use T11, T12, affecting digestion in general, and T7 to open the diaphragm and affect the intestines. Always consider the possibility of toxicity, which can be addressed with kidney 9 and large intestine 15, as well as bladder 63. Food poisoning is treated with a point below this under the second toe, where the tip of the toe meets the ball of the foot when bent inwards. Inflammatory bowel, as in ulcerative colitis, is treated as an autoimmune disease, as we discussed with Crohn's. Avoiding the use of REN4 and needling kidney and lung points, choosing the points that clear the more re most reflexes, and side gallbladder 27. Hemorrhoids are often accompanied by varicosity around L5. If you find spider veins around L5, bleeding them with either a lancet or by gently tapping a 7-star needle until just a tiny bit of blood is released, can alleviate the hemorrhoid pressure. When using a 7-star needle, you do not need to actually get a drop of blood. Simply tap gently and keep whiting the area with an alkalized cotton ball. When the cotton ball has a brownish tinge to it, it means that some blood has been released, even though you cannot see any fresh blood coming out. Although according to the text, bladder 58, treats hemorrhoids, you can use the line from just below it all the way up to just below gallbladder 34, just lateral to the center. Look for the tight spot here. So rather than using just bladder 58, you have a whole area that's quite large that you can look for tight spots and use it. Lung 6 on the left, three fingers below lung 5, can also be useful in hemorrhoids, although it has a limited capacity in my experience. The best treatment in terms of eliminating the pain and the burning is the Kawai treatment, using both bladder 35 and L5. This is a specialized treatment that requires the use of a three bypass cord and the Pachi Pachi. If you have these, needle bladder 35 on both sides and note which side is more painful when you press on it. Needle L5. Connect the green clip of the three bypass cord to the more painful bladder 35 and the red clip to the other bladder 35. Spark the needle at L5 and connect the black clip to it. If bladder 35 is not more painful on one side than the other, simply put the green clip on the left and the red clip on the right. And if you put the green clip on the right and the red on the left, it's not going to make much of a difference. Unfortunately, I do not have a magic toolkit to offer for food allergies and have relatively limited success in fully eliminating the allergies. The suggestions I offer here are ones that I use often to treat people with food allergies who come to be treated for other issues. In other words, these points interact with the mechanism of the allergies and therefore give the body a healthier tone. But I cannot say that they fully eliminate the allergies. Food allergies can involve the immune system, the nervous system, the liver, as well as enzyme production. It is common to see pressure pain on right stomach 627 in food allergies, under the right ribs, the liver, REN12, and sometimes the whole REN line from REN15 down to REN9, as well as around the navel on the front. On the back, it is common to find bladder 43, just outside the Huato line at T12 and L1, 
T11, T12 Watteau's will often feel puffy or gummy, and right side small intestine 11. With the exception of the T12 L1 area, which corresponds to, to the cisterna chile and therefore to fat transport in the lymph, I cannot category classify these areas as reflecting food allergies only, but they are commonly found in food allergies. Treatment for food allergies includes the immune points between large intestine 10 and 11 on the edge of the bone that is somewhat towards the Sun Jiao channel, spleen 9 to release the navel, and then possibly points around the navel. Liver 1 or liver 8, check the effectiveness of those two against bladder 43 to determine whether to use liver 1 or 8. The stomach chi points, the bumps along the stomach channel below stomach 40, close to the tibia. And also use points to address the central nervous system. If there is pressure pain along the REN line above REN 12, I will use bladder 2 to release that. If it extends below REN 12 as well, I will add lung 8. Basically using lung 8 as if it opens the REN, meaning rather than using lung 7, the official opening point, I will use lung 8. With food allergies, I try to prioritize do 24 to stomach 8 line to release the nervous system. In most other conditions, I would prioritize points like Samjiao 8 or under the third toe and keep the skull points until the very end. Usually, I do this so as to not create a situation where the brain input overwhelms the perception of the symptoms, and then there are not enough reflexes to check the body points. However, with food allergies, there often appears to be a stronger brain component and it is through the use of 224 to stomach 8 area that one can start to release abdominal findings and then other body points will start to work better. So this is different than how we, I would normally go through this. On the back, I use do 2 to modulate the nervous system, left bladder 35 to treat the liver, and right bladder 43, the cisterna chile point at L1, at T, T12 to L1 area, just outside the Watteau's, preferably with Ocumoxa. Also, I use T11, 12, T7, right small intestine 11, and bladder 43. In terms of eliminating the allergy so that the patient will be able to eat foods previously allergic to, I find that the various AK techniques with vials tend to work better for eliminating the actual allergy. My own bias is towards the techniques of TBM, total body manipulation. Protocols are just a starting point. They are a dogma that gives you a way in. They often need to be modified for each patient in accordance with their history and palpatory findings. Always test the points that you, you are using to make sure that they are effective. I test points by evaluating whether a point has diminished pressure pain on the abdomen, neck, or back, as that means the point is affecting the connective tissue and has an effect throughout the body. You can assess a point by changes in the pulse, if you feel confident enough to do that or by any other method that gives you a direct and immediate feedback. Direct, immediate feedback means that a change is occurring however you measure it, when you are pressing the treatment point. I believe that playing with protocols and considering the medical history and other findings, prioritizing a strategy while considering the actual named condition, testing, and being willing to rethink and re-strategize is what makes for better treatments. In this presentation, I'm offering what I call dogma, things that one can expect to see in digestive disorders, things one can expect to be effective. Dogmas tend to work 
on a large number of people. That is how they have become dogmas. But to make a treatment last longer, one often has to dig, dig deeper and become a bit more creative.